Hi, I'm Renata Clanton Moyd. I'm the communication specialist with the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. Now, during this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, our local public school system is home to over 51,000 students, and of this number, over 13,000 are children who have military connections. Educators in the Cumberland County Schools work daily along with Fort Bragg officials to help ease the transition pains of the military connected student. As a matter of fact, April will be observed as the month of the military child in the Cumberland County Schools. We'll discuss this and much more on this edition of Get Connected. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Uh, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Start a new track. What did I do? Okay. Wow. <laughs> that is so weird. Hey! Hi! Hi! Oh my gosh. Hi! Hi. God, I don't even know what to say right now. I'm so nervous. Gia, you're so big. Come closer to the camera. <laughs> Wait, now you're in my face. Bye. That was so good. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. We're talking with Cumberland County Schools Military Family and Youth Liaison, Kathy Hurley, and the Department of Defense Education Activity Grant Project Director, Rebecca Legan. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for having us. I'm so glad you all are here. This is really fun. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm always excited to talk about the military child simply because I was a military child. But I believe that we need to talk about our military children and their needs and the needs of their families. So, I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you. Now, let's jump in. How many military, now in my introduction, I mentioned that, you know, we have over 13,000 military yes. students in our schools, but talk to me a little further about that number, Kathy. Well, you know, it's kind of misleading because, you know, we have thir over 13,000 identified. Okay. And we're finding out that a lot of the parents did not fill out the military identifier letter that we sent home at the beginning of the year. And so they're not in the system as being military, you know, identified as military. So the number, I'm sure, is much higher. Wow. That's all right. Now, you all have military connections, correct? Correct. A of course. Okay. Both of you are military spouses. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Talk to me. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Um, my husband's active duty this summer. He will have been in 30 years. Wow. So, so yeah, you've long traveled time. quite 19 a bit. Nineteen moves, uh, three continents. You know, my kids went to ten different schools. So, yeah, we live the experience. Yeah, you get it. You get <laughs> we it. We get it. And you as well, Rebecca? Yes, I'm married to an active duty soldier. He's almost been in twenty years. And then I also grew up military, um, a Navy child. So, as are they say, a Navy brat. Um, we moved around a lot. Um, so when people ask me where are you from, I, I really don't have an answer. I always say, well, I was born in Florida. But um, yeah, so I just continued the military lifestyle. That's good. That's good. So you, it's always good to talk with um, other military spouses. My my husband's retired Air Guard, but then I was a military child. My father was Army. But nonetheless, with that in mind, um, I know you all find that having children and being a spouse and moving from duty station to duty station is a challenge, or is it easy? No, it's a challenge. Okay, <laughs> it's a challenge. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit easier when they're younger um, because, you know, you can do play dates and that type of thing. Um, as they get older, it, it's harder to get connected to a school or to a place because you're like, eh, we're going to be only be here two years. 
And so um, that's one of the biggest challenges. The average military child moves between six and nine times during their school career. And so, um, you know, when you're moving in two years, you don't often try to make those lasting friendships or try to, you know, get into the clubs and that type of thing. And I know we had conversation on the radio one time where we were talking about how you find the military, I mean, the mentality a lot of times of the military child is to be more connected to their things. Yes. Do you find that, Rebecca? Yeah, I do. And especially my children are a little bit different. Um, my husband's been here mostly since 99, so, but my husband has deployed every year since 2003. So um, for them, you know, they do get connected to their things, um, and they haven't had to move a lot, but they've seen, you know, their dad gone a lot, so they, we've had to make the adjustment. They're used to every summer, dad's leaving. It's usually the rotation, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so it is difficult. And so even when you are a military spouse like that, you almost, with your husband deploying quite often, you become that single parent. I think that's a, a challenge. I think that is a it challenge. It is because, you know, you can't replace being dad. You know, you try as best mm -hmm. as you can, but you do try to fill that role of, you know, the dad, the mom, you know, the caretaker, um, trying to have, a, you know, yourself, you know, who I am, and then also trying to be a mother. So it's a lot of, you, you juggle a lot. Mm -hmm. But I think Kathy and I were talking one other time when we were talking about how once they are gone, you kind of get into your groove. The kids get into the groove, even the dog. Oh, the absolutely. Pets. It's a new normal. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then when the spouse returns, that you have to get in, you have to have, there has to be yeah. some type of transition. Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's the, almost the most stressful time for the students um, because you know, they've taken on more responsibility. If it's a boy, a lot of times I'm the man of the house, that type of thing. And then when dad comes back, he's changed, the kids have changed, the mom has changed. So, you know, it just, you have to kind of get, you know, Readjust. get your new normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know even when me growing up as a military child, when my dad would come home, you know, especially middle school, you, you had your friends and, you know, your dad wanted to hang out with you. and you're just like, no, I'm going to hang out with my friends. <laughs> it, it is a big adjustment because, you you know, you do have your routine and your what everyday lifestyle is. Yeah, and they have to come back in mm -hmm. and fit yeah. in. And I'm sure there's some type of training for soldiers when they are returning. Home. Oh, absolutely. The military really has taken a um, big role in getting the soldier reintegrated into the family, kind of telling the soldier, you know, don't, you know, start making the roles and insisting on the kids do do something because um, they've been living without you for, mm -hmm. you know, three months or a year or however long. Okay, yeah, you have to ease into it, ease into it. Now with that, you mentioned earlier there are a lot of challenges that our young people, our military children have, and I think that as a whole, we just kind of assume that they're young people, they're flexible, they'll just move right in and it'll be all right and they'll just go with the flow, but that is that comes with different programs, different things being in place, but then for our military children, what are some of the challenges that a lot of them face? Um, it's a transition going into a new school a lot of times. Um, Cumberland County has, um, and really this is the only place I've seen it, they have the military family life counselors embedded in 33 schools. And so a lot of them aren't there every day, but they're there and they're there only to see military connected students. Mm -hmm. And so they, they'll have like lunches with them or uh, see them one-on-one -on -one and that type of thing. That really helps, especially if the mom or dad is deployed. That's good. And I know that in the month, and I mentioned that in the intro, during the month of April, next month, we'll be observing Military Child Month. Yes. It's okay. exciting. It is. It's very exciting. This is the 30th year that the it has 30th been. 30th year. year. It was done in 1986, and um, April is always the month of the military child, and they have Purple Up Day, which is always April 15th, if it falls during the week. And uh, they did purple because they combined all the service colors red and blue together, and of course got purple. Okay. Uh, so it's for all the military students, not just Army or Navy or Coast Guard. Uh, so it's exciting. All the schools do, do celebrations for their military-connected students. They, um, one of the schools paints their big rock in front of the school purple, and mm -hmm. they have a lot of the military you know, veterans come in, and the military moms and dads come in, and uh, they highlight the military children. It's just really exciting for them. That's good. And I'm sure a lot of our schools are looking ahead and planning for the Oh, absolutely. Well. We had the 82nd Airborne uh, Chorus comes out to a lot of the schools. Uh, the Force Con Band goes to some of the schools. I mean, it's just really exciting because Fort Bragg is really partnering with us to help uh, identify and, and honor those military-connected students. That's 
That's good. That is a good thing. Now, what are our schools doing specifically to help the military connected student? Uh, well, they have the influx of uh, military family life consultants or counselors at the schools. Um, a lot of the schools um, have military connected student clubs. Uh, four of the middle schools have student unions at, um, after school that the military student can go to and they do homework and they hang out till you know, 5.30 or so when mom or dad picks them up. Um, and you said influx? Yeah, they're military family life counselors. Okay, tell us who are these people? Who um, are the influx? They are licensed <laughs> professional counselors mm -hmm. and they're um, actually hired and paid for by the Department of Defense. Uh, the Department of Defense recognized that uh, with all the deployments since 9-11 that the, the, active, you know, the, sold, the students where mom and dad deployed, they had a lot of um, problems. Mm -hmm. You know, they had challenges, you know, because early in the war there was no internet connection. There was, you know, you didn't know where mom or dad was. And it was very uh, troubling to a lot of the students. And so they brought in these influx um, to help out um, to see the students. So it's exciting. That's good. When you say inflect, I want to think Aflac. But, <laughs> but I, I know there's a difference. In there's a little bit of difference, very, yes. Yeah, very important people. Okay, so you said the after school club. Yeah, the after school clubs. They have, um, uh, you know, where, especially during the month of the military child, during the news, you know, a lot of the schools have news in the morning. The military students will be, uh, will be able to, they do the news or they highlight one of the students that's a military connected student at the school. Um, they do, uh, you know, muffins for the military. They do, they've done. Um, gosh. You have the student to student. Student to student clubs. Or, uh, that is a program that was started by the Military Child Education Coalition, and um, it really it's all students are able to come. It's centered. It was centered around the military student helping them transition into the high school. Uh, it started out with, and now it's in the middle school too. And they it's basically it's a club that get, gets together to welcome students into the school. So if you have a new student that comes to the school, the um, student to student, the counselor will call one of the student to student ambassadors, and they will take that student and show them around. Oh, good. And you know, show them where you know the cafeteria is, where you know, you, you know, don't go down to the senior hall because you're only a freshman, that type right, thing. Right, right. Um, and it's all students can join. Um, we have some really. E. e. Smith has an excellent student to student program. So does Westover High School. Uh, Southview Middle School has a great student, uh, junior student student program. They even have a military ball. A military ball. Now, who gets to go to the military ball? Um, the people, the junior student to student uh, people, and their the it mom must. or dad, whoever's in the military. Uh, generally, they show up in uniform, and it's they're wearing their you know their kind of prom dresses, if you will. So it's uh, April fifteenth. That's exciting. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Who knew? South oh. Middle. <laughs> <laughs> that is really neat. And, and it's good, too, with the student to student, when you come into a new school, and I'm sure you remember as a military oh, child, yeah. I'm sure lunchtime was the worst. Well, you, I would even think, you know, for people who are not even military, think of as an adult starting a new job and then go back you know, so many years of being in middle school or high school and what it was like, you know, you're very unsure of yourself, you know, are you right in the right clothes, is your hair right, you know, are you going to fit in? And just walking into that lunchroom and where, where do I sit, you, sit? Who, you know, can I sit there, who should I sit there, yeah. who yeah. should I talk to? Um, you know, and even, even as an adult starting a new job, I would be like, so, you know, just put yourself in the, the kid's yeah. shoes. But I remember being in 11th grade, moving um, and figuring that, out. Yeah. Who do I talk to? Where do I go? And I'm sure you would have benefited greatly or felt better to have had that student to student interaction. Absolutely. So yeah. that ambassador could say, hey, come on, join us. Yeah. We're, you know. Absolutely. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, ladies, I've enjoyed this. And that's why I want you to stick around for some more. <laughs> okay. So don't go anywhere. Hang out with us for more Get Connected. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. some moments only the forest can inspire find yours
at discovertheforest.org. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. Our guests are Cumberland County Schools Military Family and Youth Liaison, Kathy Hurley, and the Department of Defense Education Activity Grant Project Director, Rebecca Legan. Now we're discussing what the school system is doing to assist military connected students and their families. Now, um, Kathy and Rebecca, during the break, we had this really neat conversation about the fact that, um, I guess it's just a characteristic of the military child and how a lot of students who have to transition from place to place in terms of relationships, you know, sometimes have, yeah. I don't want to say issues, but maybe, Difficulty. maybe difficulties challenges. at times, challenges yeah. with forming long lasting. Absolutely. They, and you said with your children. Uh, yeah, uh, my, my children are in their mid 20s and both of them have said that they really never had to have an argument with a friend and then work through that argument and remain friends because they always moved. And so they said that they're kind of having to learn that as an adult. Oh. So that's when I was like, oh, I, you know. Well, I mean, you know, as a parent, you can't know everything. But, yeah. But it's good that we're sharing that because that's what your children experience. I'm sure others are as well. And so maybe parents that have children who are actively moving yes. to keep that in mind in yes. terms of relationships and those types of things. Absolutely. But you know, something that we also discussed, um, Rebecca, you were saying with you having graduated from high school, a small class. About 29 yeah, and from Ceiba, Puerto Rico. Yeah, in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. that you all still stay in touch and pretty much because of social media. Yeah, because, you know, once everyone graduated, everyone sort of dispersed and went to different areas, different colleges, started new things or moved with their parents somewhere else. And just with the help of social media, we've been able to reconnect. And just recently, I went to Jacksonville, Florida and had a dinner with, you know, four or five of my classmates, which is close to almost half, you know, by that <laughs> time when you have five or six. But and I've even kept with um, with teachers. Um, got reconnected with my old soccer coach, and it's just nice. And our the art teacher, it's just nice to see where everyone is. We still have some, you know, our the art teacher lives in Sri Lanka, but we've been able to, you know, keep in contact. And that's good. Wow. And it's always good when you know people that live other places, because it's like, woo, road trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, with that in mind, um, I know Rebecca, you're working here on the Cumberland County School staff. Correct. As in administrating a grant. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the grant and what is it for? Um, it's a new grant, so it was recently awarded. Um, I was brought in in October and it's called True North, Meeting the Needs of the um, Military Child. And it's a focus of the social emotional of the military connected kids. And it's a five year grant. And the purpose of the grant is to um, hopefully, which we will do, reduce mm -hmm. the um, discipline referrals for military connected kids um, by the year 2020. That's good. So we, so is there, we have large numbers of disciplinary, disciplinary referrals? Um, yeah, and I wouldn't, you know, some of it is that socio emotional, you know, if a child's not healthy and happy, you know, then it extends and then we have academic issues. So, you know, we have to make sure that child is healthy and happy and then it, it sort of flows into everyday life. Um, mm -hmm. And there is some issues. Um, like Kathy said, you know, when you move, you, you sort of sometimes put up that guard. Um, you don't want to get close, you know, some academic be or um, behavior issues might occur then. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we do. That's okay. good. Now you all, you have other um, young ladies working there in your department as well. I do. With the grant, um, we were able to hire uh, two um, MSTCs, which is Military Student Transition Consultants. They actually uh, work for MSEC as the Military Child Education Coalition. A lot of <laughs> MTC. A lot yeah. of MSTC. We love our acronyms. <laughs> a lot of acronyms going on. Mm -hmm. But there are two ladies. One is Tanisha Perkins. Um, she is, um, this is her fourth year as an MSTC. She has a master's uh, degree in education. I'm an Odyssey Webb, who's a licensed professional counselor. Um, she's an Army veteran as well, um, was a spouse to an Army uh, soldier. Tanisha as well is a spouse to an Army soldier. So even with the MSTCs, they come from that background and knowledge of having their own children and, their, um, and know what it is like to be military connected. Um, so they're gonna come in and, e help the the eight schools because we are connected to eight schools um, um, South uh, Southview yeah. Middle School I'm sorry Southview High School mm -hmm. Jack Britt 71st High School um, Westover West, Middle. West Middle Hope Mills Middle Douglasford High School uh, Douglasford Middle School and Ireland yeah. Drive oh, 
Oh, great. That's good. That's good. Now, um, who all, and I, you already answered that, who's involved in it. And you told us about, did you tell us what the MSTCs do? And What the MSTC does with this grant, it's actually new. Um, the way they set up the grant because it's a five-year grant but this is the first time in a grant that they've actually given a planning year when okay. we were brought on board we were full force ready to go and they said you know take a step back you actually have a planning year so in this planning year we're going into the schools um, uh, Tanisha and Odyssey are introducing themselves um, we're trying to figure out the unique needs of each school because each population is going to be totally different mm -hmm. um, that way um, interviewing the staff where we can bring in pre professional development. So we're sort of getting all our ducks in a row and then we'll go into a full launch where they can actually interact with the students th uh, next year because this year we're, and I'm gathering the baseline data, um, which we will, you know, focus on as a in, um, discipline and fractions for the next four years. Um, but they're gonna go in and, and figure out based on the school, like what kind of small groups can they run? What kind of professional development can they bring to the staff? What can they bring to the parents? Um, um, we're also going to bring in, as, like as Kathy talked about before, student to student and junior student to yeah, student. Yeah, I wanted to talk more about that. Um, what's involved in those particular? Um, some of the grant? schools don't have S2S or JS2S, so we want to bring that. So as Kathy explained earlier, where they can, um, where the new student can come in and make that connection with a student that already has, uh, that's already been here. They don't have to be military connected child to be in student to student or junior student to student. Um, sometimes it's good to have a child that's from Fayetteville um, that knows the area and you know, you know, knows the clubs and knows the school and you know, um, where to go hang out with friends and just make that connection where they can make that ease. And it would be, you know, just imagine already having a friend when you enter school. Mm -hmm. um, we would even want to make that connection through the summer um, where they, you know, if a, a parent comes and register a student to student, you know, they can be contacted um, and they can make that connection and, and st start that dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, student to student and junior student to student, well, they're um, the faculty and they're um, six students from each school. Um, are going to be trained this April. So MSEC, the Military Child Education Coalition, um, they'll be coming to us to train the students um, in April, uh, two days for the high school and two days for the middle school. So they'll get that official training and then they have their planning a couple of months. So when it's an open house or in August um, when school starts next year, they can, you know, um, start welcoming the new students. That's good. Now, are we finding that other school systems that are that have a, a large that are stationed at um, military posts or base around the country do they have the same grant going on in their systems or is this something that we applied for and we show we applied for the monies and we chose to use it this way the the grant we applied for the money is specific specifically to use it this way. Okay. Um, but there are similar grants all around the country. Okay, that's so, that's yeah. what I'm um, So it, Dodia has decided that um, you can work on the academic and that's great, but if you're you know, emotional and, and, and you're the health and well-being, and if you don't feel comfortable in the school, mm -hmm. you know, that's gonna affect everything. Mm -hmm. So when you have, it's like when you have a happy kid, they're gonna do better in school, they're gonna, you know, home life's gonna be better. I mean, everything's just gonna be better. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, will there be any um, in parent involvement with any of the of what you all are planning as far as this grant program? Um, right now, we are setting up different surveys for the schools to, to feel the need, not only of the staff, but of the outside community, feel the needs of the students, feel the needs of the parents. What can we do to help them? Um, so right now, we're just in that planning stages, and we're just going to add once the um, the data comes back or you know we hear get the results of the survey to hear what they're talking about or what their needs are hear their needs that's what we're then going to base that it on basis mm -hmm. that's good that's really good now how will you all the two offices here how will you all work with um developing the grant how will you work with developing the grant's been developed i mean the grant I mean, with you know bringing this to um, fruition um I just help them out. I give them data when I get information, or okay. if you know something's changed at the school or whatever. That's you know, it's pretty much um, what I do to help. Well, it's been good because Kathy has been with Cumberland County for a while, mm -hmm. um, so she, you know, 
she's in a lot of different schools, so she can say, hey, I'm hearing this, or, you know, I'm yeah, seeing this. Good. So, you know, it's, it's nice to have that extra, you know, ear. Ears, yeah. mm -hmm. And you know what, with that in mind, something that I did forget to ask when um, we started earlier is, Kathy, tell us about exactly what you do as the um, military, the military family and, and student you, and, and youth, youth liaison. liaison. Yeah, yeah um, tell us. I really just go, I go to the schools to help uh, educate the teachers and all the uh, support staff on what the military, military culture is, some uh, challenges and things that military students might need uh, that's maybe a little bit different from their uh, non-military counterparts. Um, I was very fortunate before school started, I got to uh, uh, brief all the school counselors, psychologists, uh, social workers about the military culture and then I go, um, when we get new teachers in, if it's a beginning teacher, I go and uh, brief all of them. And I've been into about nine different schools and talked to the teachers um, about their mil military culture. And it's really interesting because a lot of people say, well, I have military spouses, you know, on my staff, you know, they know about military culture. Um, every school I've been in, when I've talked about the phases of deployment and, you know, the different things that students might feel during the deployment, mm -hmm. I've had at least one teacher come up to me every time and say, you know, I've been a military spouse and this is our second deployment, but my son didn't act this way at the first one, so I'm so glad you explained this. And it's, Good. you know, so it's so exciting. Everyone's learning. Everyone's learning, you know, and I go in, if military um, parents have a question about transitioning in, I get calls from all over the world about, you know, how do I do the school choice program and the voluntary yeah. transfer, you know, uh, I have, I'm thinking about renting a house here. What's you know? What district am I in? I mean, yeah, you just yeah, name it. So yeah, that's good. That's good. You're always a wonderful resource. <laughs> you know, I'll call you up. Yeah. Hotline bling. <laughs> cat, cat. I need help. I need help. Well, but thank that's you. good. Well, you know what, ladies? Do we have any final words? Oh, I forgot to ask you about Forward March. We don't have much time, but tell me about the Forward March conference. Just a really quick. It's a collaboration between uh, all agencies that help and support military families. So medical, uh, emotional, uh, homeless veterans, you know, you name it. And it's a two-day conference in November that we get together and we have uh, national speakers come in and um, just talk about their organizations or their, you know, techniques and everything just to help support the military families. Okay, and that's a national, a worldwide Yeah, conference. Yeah, I mean, it's always in, the, it's not a Memorial Baptist Church, uh, and it's uh, the Lynn Living in the New Normal uh, mm -hmm. group uh, puts it together. That's good. That's so. good. Ladies, you know what? Looking at the clock on the wall, and you see Rebecca's smile just went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go. But I thank you all so very much. This has been just very enlightening. It really has. Well, and it's you. good to Thanks know that our us. young people have this support there in the schools. And I'm sure there are a lot of parents out there that, w that are watching and thinking, wow, well, good. I know yes, we Cumberland are taking County care schools of your got your babies. Yes. We, we are taking care of your babies. <laughs> That's a good thing. All right, thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. All right, well, on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time.